легко сказать. О, боже мой. And we're live. Hi. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Parsix AMA. My name is Tom, and with me here is Anatoly Resin, Hi. our chief blockchain architect. And it's been a, it's been a while since uh, he did one of his live video streams. I think it's a good opportunity for him to shed some light on Parsix's latest milestone which is uh, the launch of the IQ protocol. Version 1.0 mainnet beta is live since last week. And uh, in the first 48 hours, we've seen over 10 million IQ tokens deposited into the liquidity pool as total value locked. So I think um, we can consider this a successful launch. So let's, uh, let's get into the questions. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, three questions here collected prior to this uh, live stream. And first one, Anatoly, for you, probably one of the most asked ones. Can you elaborate on the APY on the IQ protocol? What is it and how it actually works? Mm -hmm. Okay, so to answer to this question, firstly, I need to... Uh, attach my iPad because um, uh, without uh, without graphical explanations it uh, it will be hard uh, to explain. So let's uh, oh, let me share my screen. So it will be the portion of screen. So and I believe I, I believe uh, you see. So if I will write the word test, you will see it. Do, do I you see, see it? it? I see so, it. So uh, so, so, uh, so I I think that uh, that others uh, it as well. So the question about uh, APY. Uh, here uh, here. Mm, I just uh, need to differentiate uh, our um, our approach uh, of how we are mm, how we are uh, giving value to our tokens to uh, with uh, those tokens that are uh, traditionally measured via API. So. Uh, our API, uh, our API is not guaranteed. Is not guaranteed because, uh, as you already know, uh, that we tied uh, our um, so, so the revenue of uh, revenue of those uh, who staked um, tokens in IQ protocol to uh, to the demand on our services. So it means that uh, if there will be no demand at all, uh, so nobody will uh, nobody will receive any uh, nobody will receive uh, any reward in this case. But uh, this this is not the case that we plan to do. So uh, as you know, we are uh, launching a lot of services, a lot of integrations, a lot of APIs uh, that will be consumable by our partners and customers. And uh, uh, let me just explain uh, how, how to calculate what you are, what you can um, wait for uh, when, when using uh, our IQ protocol. And uh, then we will just reinterpret it in terms of um, API, APY. Uh, so, uh, what we have, uh, we have a IQ protocol that actually, uh, actually, it represents a pool where you are putting your tokens. 
uh, where you, you are putting uh, your tokens and uh, when you put uh, PRQ tokens into uh, IQ protocol, you receive so-called IPRQ. So this is PRQ tokens. And this is one, uh, so the, all your uh, PRQ tokens are converted into one uh, NFT token that is called IPRQ. Uh, it is uh, NFT token that represents uh, that uh, represents uh, your share uh, inside the uh, your share inside the pool, and uh, here is uh, relatively important uh, a relatively important um, notion of the share. What means one share of the pool? Uh, because uh, from the from the very beginning, uh, we say that one share. Uh, one share is equal to one parsec token, but it is from all only for those uh, who are investing, uh, who are putting their tokens when no borrowing uh, when no borrowing occurs. So first, uh, first um, lenders who uh, invested their pair Q in IQ protocol got shares uh, got shares uh, one to one with their uh, peer Q. Uh, in fact, inside your NFT, uh, maybe it is not uh, visible for now uh, in the UI, but uh, inside your NFT, we are tracking uh, your, your uh, amount of how many, uh, how many tokens you are invested uh, via, two, via two numbers. One number is uh, uh, how many tokens you are actually invested and how many shares you've got because uh, uh, there are two numbers, two different, uh, two separate numbers that are only uh, that are only from the very beginning they are equal, but then when borrowers when borrowers start to borrow and when additional parsic tokens are added, uh, when additional parsic tokens are added to IQ protocols, uh, it means that the reserves reserves of the IQ protocols are increasing but the share uh, total shares amount uh, total shares amount uh, is the same uh, unless uh, unless new lenders appear and uh, when borrowers are uh, providing their tokens to uh, at, the pay, at the mean of payment for for the services uh, uh, it means that uh, to the uh, that one uh, one share price in terms of parsec tokens is increasing. So, for example, uh, if somebody invests hundred PRQ, uh, hundred PRQ uh, into AP, uh, in, into IQ pool, and then after uh, immediately after that, uh, somebody invests three hundred PRQ. Oh, sorry, PRQ uh, into IQ pool that is purely divine. Uh, divine. It, it means that nobody, uh, nobody borrowed from this pool. It means that uh, those two guys, those two guys, uh, receiving uh, uh, the proportional amount, proportional amount. Uh, so it it has a, a hundred shares. It has a. 300 shares but then but then when somebody when somebody starts to borrow and increases uh pool amount for, for example it borrows for for example 40 parsic tokens it just put them uh into uh into iq protocol uh, uh for uh borrowing no for example uh for borrowing for, for example 200 200 per Q, P, R, Q, borrowed. And this is paid. So he's paying, he's paying uh, their per Q directly, uh, directly to the protocol. And it means, it means that now uh, total reserves 
of the IQ protocol will be now uh, 440 per Q tokens. Q tokens. Yet, uh, still, uh, yet still, we have curse. It means it actually means that now, uh, that now, um, every share, every share, uh, just increased in price in terms of parsec, not in terms of dollars, but in terms of parsec. And uh, it is interesting that uh, actually internally we uh, we calculate everything through shares. So, for example, uh, if if somebody will try, uh, if somebody will try uh, to invest hundred more parsecs, in that case, it means that uh, he already in this situation when. Uh, reserves are equal to 440 uh, parsecs, but uh, there are 400 shares. It means that one share, it means that one share now uh, costs like uh, 1.1 1 .1 PRQ. One that one PRQ, and it means uh, that if somebody will uh, will try to withdraw his liquidity uh, at full amount uh, together with uh, uh, with uh, accru accrued interest, uh, he will return. So, for example, first person, first person, just by burning uh, its shares, it will uh, it will get. Mm, hundred and uh, hundred and ten PRQ and and other uh, if there will be sufficient liquidity and it is other very very important uh, question he will uh, receive this one so it means uh, it means that the any revenue uh, that uh, are and uh, that is um, directed into pool. Uh, it is divided uh, between current uh, stakeholders uh, of the IQ protocol proportional to, to their shares. But uh, in, by this process, uh, by this process, uh, the price of the share is increasing. And next people, so who are lending later than first people for the same amount for the same amount of PRQ they will receive uh, less shares than the first ones uh, and uh, the and uh, uh, here uh, here is the actual question uh, here is the actual question. Uh, how the uh, how the AP, uh, APY could be uh, calculated in that case? Uh, just uh, so if we want uh, if we want uh, to calculate API, we just need to track uh, how price of one share is moving. So because for for example, if uh, if we will see that for example uh, for uh, one month. Uh, so for, for one month, uh, if we had uh, a price uh, that one share was exactly one parsec, and for example, uh, after uh, one month, uh, we will see that, um, for example, uh, one, uh, one share uh, is uh, 1.01. .01 parsec, for example, uh, it means that uh, we can state uh, we can state that the uh, APY uh, will be one percent per month, but it is not uh, it is not uh, guaranteed that it will be one percent. Uh, it uh, uh, it just reflects how many how many tokens are uh, going into protocol. Uh, during uh, during the month, so uh, it it will be 
per month. More actually, more uh, more interesting thing: what we are expected, what we are expected to have for a while. So for a while, we have such a uh, borrow uh, to lend ratio. So if you want, uh, if you want, uh, if you want to borrow, uh, if you will just check. Uh, our prices uh, when the borrowing will become available you will see uh, that uh, for now we set uh, we set that everybody who wants to borrow one parsic token one parsic token for one year uh, need to pay need to pay one uh, it means it means five percent, and actually, uh, actually, uh, this price, this price is the target for us, uh, for the API for a while. But uh, this number, uh, um, but this number will be affected. Uh, this number will be affected firstly. Uh, by two two um, factors that are um, uh, that are moving uh, this APY uh, into different directions. Firstly, uh, everybody everybody could uh, expect these numbers only only. Uh, no, and here is a trick because we all we already we already solved this thing by by another mean. But uh, let's uh, let's explain historically how how it works. Uh, this will be if all tokens will be borrowed, because uh, we say that uh, we need to, we need to create an incentive to borrow uh, parsic tokens instead of buying. Uh, instead of buying them uh, uh, on the on the market, uh, but not to uh, not to uh, not to disproportionately. For now, we are exploring. For now, we are exploring this uh, this ratio. Uh, of course, we can change this ratio and. Uh, uh, I would uh, I would say that uh, there will be another separate story about the governance of IQ protocol that uh, is completely out of the scope for now. Uh, but uh, for now, we can change uh, we can change this ratio. But we are investigating the market response, uh, and uh, without any other means to stabilize this type of APY. Uh, this API could be reached only if all tokens will be borrowed. But uh, this is the dangerous situation. If, uh, if all tokens will be borrowed, uh, it means that um, I tokens will become illiquid. So it means that if somebody wants to withdraw his pair Q tokens, then, uh, but all, uh, all tokens are already borrowed, yes, in fact, all tokens are locked in the protocol and borrowed are copies, but we are tracking very strictly. Uh, so uh, circulating amount of borrowed tokens and unlocked tokens should be, uh, should be equal to our total supply. Uh, so it means that uh, we will not allow to withdraw uh, parsic tokens if there are still uh, some borrowed amounts yet. Uh, and it means that we do not want to reach this situation when uh, your interest tokens will become illiquid. And this is why we introduced uh, the very same concept as a bonding curve, uh, as, as in uh, Uniswap and other DeFi protocols. Uh, so a uh, bonding curve uh, is the concept that um, um, I would say that it uh, connects uh, two different properties of the asset. It's supply and it's price. So uh, if something, uh, if some asset becomes more scarcer, uh, scarcer, uh, it means that the price of this asset should increase. And we say that uh, if we denote that this, if we denote 
that this is uh, available uh, available person for borrowing. For example, uh, it is hundred percent, hundred percent, and this is zero percent. We introduced uh, we introduced uh, two uh, different things. Firstly, we introduced so-called critical liquidity level. Critical liquidity level. Uh, so you cannot borrow uh, below uh, this critical liquidity level. And how, you, uh, by which mean we prevent uh, borrowing under this uh, amount. For now, critical liquidity level for PRQ pool is equal to 5%, but uh, these two, uh, these two, these uh, five percent and these five percent, they are unrelated. Uh, we just say that we reserve 5% uh, of liquidity to be always available in normal mode. Uh, in normal mode. And we, defined um, this is the base price uh, that is uh, actually equal to uh, one uh, twentieth of PRQ for uh, for uh, PRQ year. Uh, actually, actually, it means uh, five percent API if uh, APY if uh, everything is borrowed. But here we introduce a curve, a curve of the price. So it means uh, that uh, the the already borrowed uh, already borrowed tokens they already affected the price and. Uh, the higher the pressure of the borrowers, the higher the pressure of the borrowers, the higher is the price. And it means that uh, if, uh, uh, if users will still uh, would like to borrow from the, from the protocol, it will increase the price. And uh, here at the critical level of liquidity, our price goes to infinity. It means that uh, uh, it will be absolutely impossible to uh, to borrow uh, last cents or last parts of the parsic token via borrowing uh, operations. So it means that uh, we don't need to uh, for the entire pool to be borrowed to reach this uh, to reach this uh, APY. So kind of uh, kind of uh, this explanation. Uh, so so for now for now all things uh, are just. Uh, uh, all things are uh, dependent on what uh, what amount of uh, service consumption we can organize during our functioning, and we are uh, pretty optimistic uh, here. So, so such a long, such a long explanation. Yeah, thank you, Anatoly. Was supposed to be a, a one hour AMA, but mm -hmm. I think this question was important for, for people to understand better how, how all this works. Uh, so a few highlights or takeaways is that uh, the borrowing fees will depend on the amount of liquidity and borrowing demand, right? Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So if... Uh, there's less liquidity and more demand, the price goes up. Yes. Exactly. So, so the market needs to find an equilibrium or, or a supply demand, uh, say, some kind of uh, level. Yeah. It should. And uh, we have seen questions about the reward distribution. So when someone comes and borrows, pays a fee for borrowing the tokens, they are not distributed entirely at that moment right they're just distributed over time and not linearly 
Yes, yes. Uh, this one uh, is one important uh, one important uh, feature of the IQ protocol uh, that prevents uh, that prevents um, some types of attacks. Uh, so when somebody when somebody borrows uh, when somebody borrows uh, some amount of tokens but uh, i would say that uh, we can omit uh, information about uh, that somebody borrows any tokens he just pays uh, when somebody pays uh, his money into protocol uh, we uh, uh, we distribute these uh, using uh, using non linear form formula over the time we sta we are starting streaming we are start streaming uh, this amount according to uh, uh, according to cur curve that looks like this one. So it means uh, it means that uh, when uh, when somebody inserts a coin uh, or you know, some amount of money into uh, IQ protocol. Uh, you are expected. Uh, you are expected to uh, receive. You are expected to receive a half. Uh, a half of this. So this is how many was inserted dollars or PRQs. Uh, I mean uh, payment. Uh, mean of the payment. We have a uh, we have a notion of. Mm, gap halving period that uh, we denote uh, this one uh, is the period of time uh, when half when half of the uh, half of the money uh, is distributed uh, via uh, is distributed uh, through stakeholders and uh, this uh, uh, this thing uh, corresponds to Mm, to the fact uh, that users, uh, when they are borrowing, uh, they uh, actually borrowing uh, tokens not for uh, immediate usage. They are borrowing tokens for the uh, for the uh, long period, and uh, uh, even in future upgrades of the uh iq protocol they will be able to uh interrupt uh, so for example if somebody borrowed a million of pair q and suddenly understood that after two months he uh, he doesn't need to um, to use this million and uh, he uh, th there is uh, sufficient for example a half of this amount for him uh uh he will even uh, be allowed to refund uh, because uh, we are not streamed all the rewards uh, of him to the iq protocol so there is some refundable part uh, that is exponentially shrinking but still uh, still is there so so for example if he will change his mind early then he would recover almost all funds but uh, the longer he uh, the longer he or she uh, waits the more uh, the more his funds uh, are uh, flowing into IQ protocol and this uh, this curve this curve is um, chosen because of its mathematical properties because of its mathematical properties uh, that allows to aggregate seamlessly uh, all the funds of all uh, all the funds of all users. We are using the same uh, gap halving period that is equal to one week. Uh, it means that during one week, half of uh, half of the funds will be released to uh, uh, to lenders. Uh, another week, another half, and it is. It is shrinking. It is shrinking. But uh, when users are increasing, uh, when users are uh, increasing this amount, so this is one loan. This is another loan. Uh, it looks like that. So uh, this is 
pending. Uh, this, this is the graph, how looks uh, the pending amount. This is the first. Boom. Something like that. Uh, this, uh, this mathematical property allows us to keep only one number, uh, only one number, only current amount and the time. So it's first time, second time, third time, uh, moment. So we track only these things, but all other things are calculated di dynamically through the time. If we would use, for example, a linear uh, release, uh, we would need to store a lot of uh, a lot of points in the future, how to release, and it would be extremely uh, costly for the even for the Binance smart chain for the implementation because uh, unfortunately EVM is not supposed to uh, work with uh, algorithms that are uh, that are okay uh, in their uh, complexity uh, yet has uh, for example reasonable constants uh, another another blockchains like for for example Solana or Near Protocol, they are uh, allowing uh, more computations per transaction. Uh, so so there may may be uh, so if and when uh, uh, IQ Protocol will be uh, delivered on that blockchain, so we will uh, reformulate how. Uh, how rewards are distributed but for now uh, for now uh, the highest speed of the reward distribution is at the moment when somebody uh, increased uh, a total amount of uh, borrowed tokens so in this uh, this fact this fact can explain uh, uh, this fact can explain uh, why local API uh, APY calculated uh, on the first day, for example, when somebody borrowed, uh, could be uh, uh, could be uh, bigger than the APY that is calculated afterwards, because the speed of uh, funds distribution is maximal at the beginning, and when somebody adds. Uh, borrowing uh, tokens, uh, it will uh, it will be uh, once more increased, but then gradually uh, uh, slowing down. But uh, because we are believing, because we are believing that the rate of our uh, borrowing will be constant, so it means that uh, we will see something like that. And during the and during the uh, long period, we will have a, some average uh, APY uh, that you that you can expect. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So it, uh, it might sound sound complex to some, but uh, but hopefully everyone can view this video to better understand the mechanics behind the IQ protocol. <clears throat> so I'll um, I'll be taking the next questions. And the next one is, are all of the clients Parsec were adding manually entered into the IQ protocol by now? So the answer is uh, no, not yet. So we've been adding uh, those subscriptions where clients have, uh, users have paid us in fiat, in stable coins or other assets. They're still in the process of being added and will be for, for some weeks. And uh, after that, we, we expect uh, the correct borrowing to start working uh, within this month, within the next one, two weeks. And people can, uh, new subscribers, new users can borrow directly. So you'll be definitely seeing an uh, increase in, in borrowing over the next uh, period of time. And uh, the third question was, when will users be able to borrow from the protocol on the website? So the estimation is uh, one, two weeks. From now, we've uh, opened this access manually to some enterprise clients for testing and feedback purposes. 
but very soon anyone should be able to do that. And uh, we're currently in the process of uh, connecting the off-chain parts, the monitoring parts, and, and connecting the off-chain subscriptions to this. So very shortly, everyone should be able to, to see or full experience of, of the IQ protocol, lending and borrowing both. We covered uh, the, the first three questions. I uh, I remember some questions from the Telegram chat that I've spotted. Uh, they're um, very interesting questions. Uh, um, so uh, no, one aggregated question uh, returns to the, the question about the APY because uh, sometimes users are trying to uh, to compare uh, to compare API uh, that is by fact uh, that is by fact um, proposed by the IQ protocol and API that is kind of uh, guarantedly uh, provided uh, from staking options in different protocols in different new projects. Uh, Mm, uh, firstly, uh, one important one important notion, uh, one important note. So the the parsic uh, parsic is non-inflationary asset. We don't uh, we don't mint it. Uh, we don't mint it. So for example, if we would mint parsic tokens yes then uh, of course we could guarantee uh, some uh, some uh, apy some yield uh, in this case but parsic tokens is not non inflationary asset this is the first uh, thing uh, another uh, another question uh, is uh, about uh, about a APYs uh, um, that are provided uh, by non-inflationary assets uh, or nearly uh, non-inflationary assets uh, like first, uh, th there were two, two different questions. One question uh, was about BNB. So, uh, so Binance itself uh, allows to stake BNB tokens. Uh, or I do not know current situation, but uh, at least I've heard uh, this option that BNB uh, allowed to stake BNB tokens uh, for 8% uh, uh, APY. Uh, and I would say that firstly, firstly uh, Binance itself, uh, Binance itself uh, is uh, a huge uh, is a huge company that can uh, that can uh, do both things uh, for for their tokens. They can uh, buy back tokens from the open market and burn them, and uh, they can use their internal reserves uh, to to implement that uh, that staking. Uh, of course. Uh, when uh, when uh, we uh, will be as big as Binance, we we could do the same things if it will be possible in legal uh, in legal environment where we are when we are. Uh, but uh, other thing that I can uh, say about burning tokens uh, sometimes uh, sometimes users are proposing. Uh, for uh, for service providers that are connected with tokens, uh, they say, guys, can you uh, can you use part of your can you use part uh, of your revenue uh, to uh, buy back tokens from the market and burn them? And uh, everybody sees that uh, this solution. Uh, that this solution is uh, healthy for the token price for for for, for all, but uh, what uh, what happens in IQ protocol uh, when somebody puts their uh, their PRQ 
uh, uh, sorry, PRQ into IQ protocol, it is distributed. Uh, so let's let's compare to situation. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's us buy back uh, these tokens from the um, from the market using part of our uh, revenue and just burn it. If we if we will do uh, this, then everybody in the ecosystem will benefit. Because uh, everybody, when, when we are burning tokens uh, and removing it from the circulating supply, uh, then uh, everybody uh, gets a bit richer. But what we are doing, we are taking parsic tokens from those who want, uh, who want uh, to pay with it and concentrate this parsic in hands who, uh, who lend it, who lend uh, uh, who lent their tokens. It means that uh, in comparison with burning scenario, uh, we are rewarding uh, those who invest into IQ protocol. So they get a double, uh, so uh, uh, not, 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 uh, not double richer, uh, but uh, I would say that even factor, even factor could be, uh, more uh, than in comparison with the burn scenario. And for now, for now, uh, we are uh, spending almost all the almost all the revenue uh, that is uh, backed by our services just to uh, just to uh, withdraw Parsec from the market and put it in IQ protocol. And even when we uh, will uh, allow to pay not in parsecs but in stable coins inside the IQ protocol, what will protocol do? It will go to the pancake swap or to Uniswap, will buy back uh, the token, extract it from the market, and uh, will give it to uh, will give it to users uh, that are uh, landed their PRQ. This is the comparison with the uh, burning scenario. Here's a, here's a good question I've seen asked around. So could you elaborate on what risks you think exist in lending on the beta version? Uh, on uh, what risks? So uh, I believe that is because of our uh, banner that uh, that says that product is in the beta. Uh, use it uh, on your own risk. Uh, I would say uh, I would say that uh, there are several risks uh, here. One is economical risks because the model itself uh, is relatively new, but we believe that it will uh, it allows us to fundamentally tie. Uh, the price of the token to the uh, to the success of our company, but here is interesting thing that I will cover uh, later. Uh, and other is technical is technical risk uh, because uh, we ourselves uh, we are hosting um, Binance. Smart chain nodes. We are observing uh, their technical. I would not say uh, issues, but we say that Binance Smart Chain itself uh, is overwhelmed with transactions. They've decided to make a very small block time. Um, blocks uh, are propagated uh, in the in blockchain uh, via nodes. Uh, Mm, with some uh, with some delays, but we are, we have uh, supercomputer nodes that are uh, that are mm, not vulnerable to to these uh, things. But uh, we've seen uh, that uh, there are some technical problems uh, in Binance Smart Chain. Uh, I believe that they will be resolved by the Binance Smart Chain by themselves. It's a scaling, a scaling problems like in Ethereum. 
but uh, in the Ethereum, in the Ethereum, uh, all is solved by just uh, increasing gas prices that uh, we that we already seen. But uh, Binance Smart Chain should apply some technical solutions, and they are already applying it to scale. Um, their blockchain because their blockchain inherited all the problems of the of the ethereum itself so we are just protecting ourselves from the underlying technology underlying technology faults with this expression if uh, if something will happen uh, with the tokens uh, themselves so for example or some vulnerability will be found but uh, i will hope that uh, there will not be a vulnerability as we are uh, firstly uh, we are audited uh, all the logic uh, is uh, very clear to to do developers uh, how to how to implement all the things yet in any case, if anything will happen, uh, we will use our governance to, to restore the correct state. But uh, I, I think that it's a uh, measure that uh, is for, for uh, absolutely uh, a problematic situation and we will not use it. All right, let's get on to the next question. Would it be possible to voluntarily lock tokens on our wallets with a governing flag and send the flag to the IQ smart contract that issues IPRQ so that PRQ never has to leave our wallets? Uh, I would say that if uh, our token, if our token uh, would be implemented in that way, uh, it would be possible, but uh, we are abstaining uh, from that principle because uh, it needs a support. It needs a support from the token itself. But we are preparing IQ protocol itself, uh, not just for parsic tokens. So everybody with standard ERC20 token could leverage IQ protocol, create their own enterprise and start delivering services like us. Uh, on top of the IQ protocol and their tokens uh, could not be ready for that functionality. Uh, another solution that probably could be implemented if you want to see if you want to see what you uh, what you have or what you actually uh, landed uh, to IQ protocol, uh, we could kind of create an uh, uh, a token that uh, will report the balance uh, via ERC20 protocol. And it means that when you will land, you will actually change one token to another token uh, and the balance will, will be kept. But actually, they're just numbers. They're just numbers. And uh, what, you, uh, what you have uh, in your wallet uh, what you have in your wallet. Uh, we soon uh, we will uh, implement a generation of visual representation of NFTs or like uh, like CryptoKitties or like that uh, that will denote uh, that will show the contents of your uh, I token and you will be able to review your. Uh, I tokens directly in MetaMask, so, so because it will just generate a visual representation uh, of I token that represents a lending agreement, and there will be uh, how many how many tokens uh, you have, but mathematically it is uh, actually the same. Mm -hmm. So here's a. Uh question, what are the next important technical problems you have to solve? I think that's in terms of IQ. In terms of IQ, uh, I would say that um, there are no problems. There are a lot of technical, uh, there are a lot of technical things that uh, uh, should be implemented. So for example, first, mm, First important feature is the refundability, for example, uh, of uh, loans. For, for now, 
uh, loans are uh, for for now loans are constrained by maximum uh, time of two months uh, but we want to remove uh, this uh, we want to remove this um, uh, constraint and add the possibility to to borrow for longer uh, amount but uh, as well to uh, to for example convert one uh, one token to another token because uh, uh, for now we are we implemented IQ protocol that uh, for for the sake of traceability we um, we divided services so for example if somebody uh, wants uh, to monitor addresses or if somebody wants to uh, consume our uh, APIs uh, they will borrow different tokens but uh, these tokens will be uh, taken from the same lending pool it's just for tracking for uh, for the uh, price discovery measures mm. and i would say that implementation for uh, for non evm uh, uh, implementation of the iq protocol for non evm uh, blockchains is one of the milestones that we are planning to reach and it will be a very interesting journey i would say very often asked question when will we see iq protocol on the ethereum network yeah on the ethereum network uh, so firstly we want to understand what will happen with ethereum uh, after london uh, hard fork because uh, it completely changes the picture of how transactions are sent how cal we calculate uh, expenses uh, on, or the transactional overheads what are the prices of the gas could we uh, could we reach the compatible price of uh, transactions for lending, for borrowing? Uh, and I would say that after, uh, after we will understand all the implications and how, uh, how Ethereum itself will uh, work and will sustain itself uh, in after London hard fork era, uh, it will give us uh, insights uh, uh, how uh, how to implement it. Maybe we will even uh, implement it in more full or in more reduced uh, way uh, for them. J just just to mm, battle with uh, transaction overhead. So not not uh, not uh, not earlier than the London uh, hard fork will survive at least uh, two months, I would say. And next question: Has the response to IQ protocol launch matched your expectations? Uh, I can take this one. So yes, it, it has matched. Uh, first of all, the amount of PRQ that is uh, was put into the liquidity pools, I think uh, over 10% circulating supply in three eight hours is, uh, is a great result. And despite the fact that the uh, protocol is on BSC and there's this friction where someone has to reach their rc 20s to be a B20s and we still see a lot of traction. And, and especially we've seen a lot of uh, positive feedback from our partners, uh, clients, and uh, industry players in general, a lot of whom think that this concept is, uh, is the future, that uh, expirable virtual versions of utility tokens, decentralized subscriptions, truly the future. Because when you, when you look at all the projects uh, on the market, all the tokens, they are mostly utility tokens. So they give you some kind of rights some kind of access, uh, they provide utility and have those a group of people who trade or, or purchase those tokens in the hope of its price appreciating. And for them, 
they are willing to take the price volatility risk because of the reward. And this gives them additional incentives to hold it. And for the other group that want utility, want access to those products, those features, those rights, uh, it's, it's basically, they may not want to be exposed to the volatility and the risk of the downside. Of, so so it's, it's a perfect match where people can borrow without getting exposed to the volatility and get to use the utility of those assets. We've been approached by NFT platforms where uh, they asked if they can do an NFT version of IQ protocol where you can borrow NFTs because a lot of these NFTs give you uh, types of rights and, and, and access to features in game assets uh, to play around with them. I think the possibilities are, are huge and we've not even talked about off-chain businesses, not, not only crypto ones, but since blockchain is the future, we'll see tokenized models of real world businesses where this can be applied to get uh, liquidity, to fundraise on a global uh, level and, and to directly tie the demand for this business's services and goods to the demand for the token. So let's see what else. Is the demand for Parsec services depending too much on market conditions when a prolonged downtrend market comes? Will, will the re IT revenue have a big impact? Um, it's a good question. Personally, I don't think so. I, we are past the uh, 2017, 2018. We have some seen some actual adoption. Now, whenever a market downturn happens, uh, everyone will actually start building because that's the time to build. Uh, and I, I think uh, infrastructure will always be needed. So I really, I don't see, I, I see the market uh, size for DLT services only increasing year by year. So my opinion is uh, it shouldn't impact the, the demand for Parsec services in a negative way. Yeah, and here I just want uh, to uh, uh, rephrase. I, I did not whether it was really said by Andre Cranier, the creator uh, of the Year in Finance, but uh, I've said that uh, this phrase was attributed to him. Uh, so the um, bull markets uh, are. Uh, 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 bull markets are creating scam projects and bear markets are creating true innovations. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think, uh, I, know, I know this was short. This was intended as a one hour AMA. Uh, I think we covered the most often asked questions and the main parts. So maybe after, after the borrowing side is live for everyone, after we've seen some more, more numbers and statistics and see how well the, the renting pool is doing on IQ protocol, we can do a part two. But uh, for now, uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, see you on the next AMA. So thank you very much, guys.